We now need to consider the slopes of indifference curves in more detail. And we start with the definition that I've written at the top of the screen. Minus the slope of the indifference curve is called the marginal rate of substitution of x for y. Marginal rate of substitution, sometimes abbreviated MRS. The reason why we have this minus sign here is because the slope of the indifference curve in most cases, in the, indeed in, in cases where the monotonicity assumption holds, that is the more is better assumption holds, the slope of the indifference curve is negative. It's hard to talk about negative numbers and so the marginal rate of substitution is defined as a positive number. Well in order to turn a negative number into a positive number, you have to multiply by negative 1. And that's the purpose of the negative sign on the left-hand side. It means that you take the slope of the indifference curve and you multiply by negative 1 in order to get the marginal rate of substitution. So in a typical indifference curve of the sort that I've drawn on the left, we have a downward sloping and convex shape, and I've drawn two tangent lines. Let's think about what the numerical difference between these slopes is. And here I'm going to put some numbers on it because it can be very difficult to talk about whether something is larger or smaller when you're talking about negative numbers. And so it's going to be helpful here to put numbers on this graph. But I don't have any numbers on the graph. Well, one way to handle this is to make an arbitrary assumption that the x-axis and y-axis is measured in the same units. In other words, if you go one inch along the x-axis, it's the same as same change in x as if you were to go one inch along the y-axis have a change in y. And and that would mean that a 45 degree line on this on this graph like this would have exactly a slope equal to one. So let's make that assumption even though it's technically it's not warranted and so I couldn't say anything definitive about numbers but it'll help us talk about how the marginal rate of substitution can be calculated. Starting in the upper left, I can pick two arbitrary points on the tangent line and think about rise over run. And the tangent line is going to have a negative slope. It's pretty negative. Let's approximate how much more the rise is than the run is. Well, it looks to me, let's just do some measuring. It looks to me like roughly uh, three lengths of the rise uh, of the run could go into the rise. In other words, the ratio is roughly three to one. And if that's the case, then I'm going to say that the slope of the indifference curve is minus three. So at this point, I'm call it a. We'll say it a. slope of the indifference curve is minus 3 and so the marginal rate of substitution of x for y is equal to 3 because again in order to get from the slope of the indifference curve to the marginal rate of substitution you have to multiply by negative 1. How about for b? Well take two arbitrary points on B, do the rise and run thing again. Okay, well, uh, obviously this slope is very different. The run is much bigger than the rise. How much bigger? Oh, I don't know, maybe 10 times bigger. So perhaps this is a ratio of 1 to 10. And uh, and if so, then the slope would be, would be rise over run, 1 over 10, but it's negative, so the slope would be negative 1 tenth. So we have slope is equals minus 1 tenth. That's the slope of the indifference curve. I won't write of the indifference curve, you know what I'm talking about. And therefore the marginal rate of substitution of x for y would be positive 1 tenth. So let's think about what happened. With this 
convex sh uh, downward sloping shape. The marginal rate of substitution at point A was 3. You had an MRS of 3. And at B, the MRS, you had an MRS of 1 tenth. Now, I know I should write marginal rate of substitution of x for y, but I'm abbreviating things. So as you go from left to right, you went from a marginal rate of substitution of 3 to a marginal rate of substitution of 1 tenth. So the marginal rate of substitution fell as it went from left to right. This characteristic of falling marginal rate of substitution as you go from left to right is called diminishing marginal rate of substitution of x for y. And it's a fairly important concept. Anytime you have a downward sloping convex indifference curve, which is the standard kind of indifference curve we're going to be dealing with, you have diminishing marginal rate of substitution of x or y. Now, again, diminishing means that as you go from left to right, the marginal rate of substitution falls. Obviously, if you went from right to left, it wouldn't, but that's not what we mean by diminishing. Diminishing means as you go from left to right, the marginal rate of substitution falls. The only time you're not going to have diminishing marginal rate of substitution is in those weird cases where mixing is actually not, not a good thing. I won't spend a lot of time on that because those cases are so unusual. But, but if we had an indifference curve like that, and then thought about what the tangent lines look like, Clearly, the tangent lines become steeper as you go from left to right. So in terms of the slope, the first slope would be, well, this is roughly uh, maybe 1 here to 2. So you'd have a slope of, of uh, minus 1 half. And over here, um, this, this is 1. Maybe this is 2. So a slope of roughly minus 2. And so what would the marginal rate of substitution be? Well, the marginal rate of substitution of x to y here would be 1 half. And the marginal rate of substitution of x to y here would be 2. And so as you go from left to right, you go from 1 half to 2. So the marginal rate of substitution goes up. So this would be an example of increasing marginal rate of substitution of x to y. But as I said before, this is a very unusual shape, and we're not going to be considering those, those the, 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 these kind of shapes much anymore. The intuition for diminishing marginal rate of substitution works something as follows. If you're in this, this area of the first graph, you're very willing to substitute x for y. Uh, I mean, you're, even if you get one more unit of x, you're happy to give up three more units of y. So you're really happy to substitute x for y, so the marginal rate of substitution of x for y is really large. Whereas down in, in the other part, that's not true anymore, and so the marginal rate of substitution becomes quite small. So that would be a way of interpreting the marginal rate of substitution.